In this video, we'll be diving into the markets, the restaurants, and the dishes that make Madrid a culinary hotspot around the world. Good morning, guys. We are in Madrid. It's our first day here. We're here for four days. Super excited. A lot of really good food on the way. Tons of tapas. It's gonna be a really fun time. We're walking to our first spot of our food crawl for the next four days. This place should have a really cool traditional tapas and then also some vermouth. We haven't had vermouth here yet. We know it's like a something a lot of people say that you should try here. So we'll see how it is. We'll be there in a second. La Comada actually translates to crowded in English, but I guess we got really lucky because when we got there, there was nobody in the restaurant. You're greeted by this beautiful wall of Spanish wines on the left, a fridge full of cheese to my right, and of course, some Iberian ham hanging on the walls. As much as I was tempted by some of those red wines on the wall, there was something I needed to try first. This is vermouth. For those of you who don't know what vermouth is, it's like a fortified wine, but it's flavored with different botanicals, so like fruit, sparks. It's good. It's good. It's like a really spiced good flavor. This next one might look intimidating to some people, but I promise you, you need to get out of your comfort zone and try it. This is their tin razor clip. Mm. I love the taste of tin fish. The flavor that you get from it, it's just been marinating in that oil that it sits in. And this is no different. So, so good. <laughs> really good. Another absolute classic is Galatian style octopus. Tender octopus served with salt, olive oil, and a generous amount of paprika. Mm. Olive oil, paprika, super simple. Really fresh seafood, really good. When you eat really fresh octopus, it's not chewy. It almost just melts when you bite into it. Amazing bite. The last thing we ordered from here was Cayos con Carbanzos, which roughly translates to tripe and chickpea stew. When I told Kiana that tripe meant stomach, she got a little nervous. Really excited to try this one. Kiana's scared, she's a baby. I'll still try it. Mm. So hearty, you're gonna like that. We just got done with the first restaurant. Kiana liked that tripe so much that she actually bought <laughs> a little container of it. So we'll try it out. It should be really good. I thought that restaurant was cool. Look at Kiana all happy here about the tripe she was bringing home. That just goes to show you the power of trying new foods. We spent the rest of the day walking around the city and looking at sites. We hadn't really fully adjusted at the time yet. Okay guys, it is day two in Madrid. We are currently at the San Martin market. We're gonna look for some, some meats, some cheeses, and anything else that we can see, but I think we're gonna have a picnic at a park today, so. Stay tuned for that. When visiting Madrid, going to multiple markets is a must do. I always feel such a great energy from a vibrant market like this. And it also gives Kiana multiple opportunities to practice her Spanish. We grabbed all of our fruits, meats, and cheeses from the market and headed outside. I know this probably isn't the healthiest practice, but we set up right in the street because the people watching was incredible. We actually brought all of our stuff from the first market to the San Miguel market and we're sitting outside of there. And that's where I got all of these little seafood bites. This one was some sort of crab with what looks like little dollops of caviar on the top. It's really hard for me to tell you guys anything else based off Kiana's description. What is it? Caviar. Mm. Good? Is it crab in there? No. What's that white caviar. stuff? What's the white stuff though? Um, the, the stuff that you put under the caviar. This one right here surpassed all my expectations. Maybe just visually, I didn't have high hopes for it, but I was 100% wrong. The fish was incredibly creamy and nice and salty. I was very, very surprised with this. I almost didn't record it because I didn't think I was gonna like it. So creamy and flavorful and almost sweet. Really, really good. I would get like eight of these. Super good. After our picnic, we went to a really beautiful park. A lot of times with days like these, you don't really fully appreciate it until it's in the past. So I try to make an active effort to take in everything around me, whether that's food, people, the views, all of it. Because before you know it, the day's over, then the week's over, then the trip's over, and you're back at work reminiscing about the amazing times that you had. Speaking of that, the next restaurant that we went to was nothing short of amazing. I am so beyond excited to share this restaurant with you guys because I had an amazing time here. The name of the place is Bugal, and it's headed by Chef Hugo Ruiz. The space itself is beautifully elegant, 
and there was so much going on, but at the same time, it was all done very tastefully. At this restaurant, the star of the show is tuna. Much of it from the Straits of Gibraltar between Africa and Spain. Okay guys, so we're up at our seats right now. I actually forgot my mic today. I was super nervous, but we lucked out. There's nobody upstairs. They put us upstairs so we could film. Look how lucky we just got. When I say there's nobody, there's nobody, and it is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. What do you think, Yana? So beautiful. They started us off with some nice sourdough and olive oil, and we got straight into the tuna. This is one of their classic staple dishes here at Bugao, and in my opinion, a perfect intro to what you're in for when you come to the restaurant, which is lots of melt-in-your-mouth seafood that's full of flavor. On the top of the crisp is black truffle. Oh my God. So fresh. It is melting. Melt in your mouth. Black truffle on top. Perfect. They have a, uh, aioli on the bottom with soy sauce. It's really, really good. It's a lot of things that black truffle does not belong on, but this is not one of them. The black truffle goes exceptionally well with the tuna. It's just something about the, the soft bite of the tuna and the mild but amazing flavor that you get from it. And then it's a really nice, strong flavor from the black truffle. It's just a great bite. The next thing they brought out was their akami tartare, which essentially translates to lean tuna. It was really good looking when they brought it to the table, but they mixed it in front of us and I forgot to record it, so I'm sorry for that. The only negative part about this dish, and frankly, the only negative part about the entire lunch as a whole, was that this dish was super salty. That is super, super salty. If you watch my videos, you know I love salt, but the simple flavor of tuna, I think it's a yuzu aioli. Following the tuna tartare was their shrimp flatbread. On top was a wasabi aioli. It was kind of bittersweet to have something other than tuna because I love it so much, but it's nice to try new things too. And there's a lot more tuna coming. It's kind of like a baklava consistency down here too. Very flaky. The crunch that you got from this flatbread was amazing. Oh my God. You get sweet shrimp initially on that bite. And it's perfect with the wasabi because it gives it a little kick. And then it is kind of like baka body flavor, right? Mm -hmm. like, or like the texture. It's very like flaky on the bottom. Beautiful, really good. This beautiful dish here is their spider crab lasagna. Don't get me wrong, I really liked this one, but I think Kiana liked it even more than I did. I feel like the quality of the actual pasta is so good. I especially love how they added the eggs because it adds so much texture to it, the way they like pop. They make their own vermouth here, so I'm excited. I've been on a vermouth kick ever since I got here. I'm addicted to it, it's super good. This is one of the better vermouths I had in Spain. Fiona's making me laugh. She's sitting right here making faces at me like, I'm sorry, I have to end the video. So, as you could probably tell through the courses that we've had at this restaurant, the main event of this place is tuna. The restaurant is based on a city, and I'll put it in a in the caption on the screen here. I forget the name of the city, but it's in the south of Spain. I'm assuming, I've never been there, but obviously, based on the food today, they eat a lot of tuna. Tuna entree, tuna appetizer, tuna everything. And it's absolutely amazing. If you're in the area and you're a tuna fan, you have to come here. This was our final course of our lunch at Bugao. Okay, this next course is the back neck of the tuna, back of the black truffle, uh, and it also has the celery puree. My expectations for this were not very high because I'd had this dish before at another restaurant in a similar way and it was not good, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's so tender. And actually when we cut into it, it wasn't like your traditional coloring of tuna, like where it's red on the inside. It looked like almost overcooked, but it's a different cut of the tuna. And because of that, it's super tender, like really, really well cooked. We finished off our lunch with some dessert and it was off to our next destination. The place that we sat outside of earlier in this video. What I'm alluding to is the San Miguel Market. We're now at the San Miguel Market. This is like a really, really big tourist attraction market. It is packed. Look at this. I mean, just shoulder to shoulder. I just hit my head on something. You excited, Kiana? Mm -hmm. The way that it typically works in here is everybody kind of stands around these tapas bars, but you kind of have to fight for your way in. I'm sipping right here is a Tinto de Verano, which is one part red wine, one part soda. Really good. The first bite that I took was this shrimp toast. It's worth noting how smart it is to have all the food lined up on these counters because you really can't resist when you're looking at it. That shrimp is so fresh. 
so good. Sweet, crunchy bread. Like I was saying, the combination of all of that food being right in front of us at the counter in that really, really good first bite, it was almost impossible to not order a lot more food. Look at that. After seeing the octopus, we knew we had to order it. But before that came out, we had a couple more small bites to finish. This was sausage, cheese, and a pepper on toast. It was good, but it wasn't really great. I also struggled kind of keeping the whole thing together as I bit into it as well. The next dish was much better. Piping hot, crispy, flavor-filled chicharrones. Do I eat this part too? Whole thing. <laughs> a little hot. Cool, cool. <laughs> I love the concept of standing and eating. Not like a bar like this, or it's super busy and crowded, but it feels kind of fun, right? We're having a lot of fun on this trip so far. I love the channel. At this point, it was about time for us to explore what else the market had to offer, but not before we ate our pupa. This is similar to the one that we had in the first restaurant of the video. The major difference though that I noticed was that this one was a little bit less salty and was super, super fatty. And I will say the price at this stall in particular was pretty steep. The next stall wasn't really as much Spanish inspired as it was just really delicious. It was called Mozart and it serves up everything mozzarella. Kiana opted for a pretty basic one, but it was really good looking. It was just prosciutto with balsamic glaze, which Kiana is obsessed with, and then mozzarella on the bottom on a piece of toast. That's not gonna end well. It's fine, just eat it. Just eat it for the video. Just eat it, just eat it, Kiana. Eat it. Kiana, please eat it. Please eat that, I'm not gonna eat that. It was pretty easy to tell that she absolutely loved that thing. After this, we went on a little walk outside and we actually found another market that was doing different kinds of foods from different countries all around the world. This place was really cool, but there's two more traditional spots that you guys have to see. We are here at Casa Omadeo. I saw this on a Mark Wiens video, so I gotta give credit to him. They do snails, uh, all sorts of other stuff. It's super, super traditional, amazing Spanish restaurant. Let's go check it out. This absolute institution is headed by Amadeo Lazaro, who I believe is around 95 years old. He started working at a bar when he was 11 years old and he bought this place in 1972 with dreams of having his own tavern. I was ready for my first bite of snail. It came seamlessly out of the shell. And again, the whole concept of standing and eating with your friends or family is just such a fun idea. It has a unique way of bringing people together. Something in my upbringing that I can compare this to is eating blue crab with Old Bay and butter. It's more than just eating, it's an activity. So good. Spicy, really, really hearty and fatty. Super fatty, like, almost like, we are the small, the large would have been a lot. Sorry for the audio in some of these clips, by the way, I forgot to bring my mic, so all we could really do was try our best. We finished off with some vermouth and it was off to the last spot on our list. La Casa del Abuelo is an absolutely legendary spot in Madrid. They're known for their shrimp bathing in olive oil, but their house wine is really something special. Like I said, this is the main event. It's their shrimp with garlic, parsley, and peppers in a bowl of bubbling olive oil. Let's give it a try. It melts in your mouth. Perfect. When we walked in, we also saw these squids sizzling on the flat top. It's pretty incredible how a place like Madrid that's so landlocked gets access to such fresh seafood. 
This restaurant was so rich in history, the food was amazing, and if you're in the area, you definitely have to give it a try. For as long as I can remember, I've been so passionate about food, as well as the culture that comes with it. And Madrid, to me, was nothing short of spectacular. This video is only a small portion of the amazing spots that we checked out. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. I have lots more travel videos coming soon. Let me know in the comments which place we should go next.